and uh, uh, just just a summary because we started with this project uh, divided in five parts the first one was about the concept of early treatment what early treatment means today and uh, uh, why we can use this, uh, this sort of approach that is not very conventional in uh, daily orthodontic work and uh, after this we uh, analyze the early signs of the development of malnutritions, uh, speaking about all the kind of uh, alteration of the occlusion that we can treat. We need to treat early and what is better not to treat. And uh, uh, starting from these two uh, sort of considerations, we analyze the use of LM activators and uh, their indication and contraindications in a particular way that this kind of approach is very useful when we want to treat alteration of uh, overjet and overbite uh, an amount of anterior crowding incisive crowding and uh, the cross bite anterior cross bite of one or two teeth rotation of the anterior teeth, tendency of grow in class two relationship and uh, lateral cross bites. But we need to pay attention because we said that these appliances are able to create, to, to manage the, uh, the, um, the forces created by the muscles, but in particular way created by the eruption of the teeth. So when we need active forces, like uh, when we need to apply a real intrusion of incisors or a control of the torque of incisors or we need to expand in a very important way uh, it's not possible to work correctly with this kind of appliances and in these two tables you have a summary of these uh, indications but which is what is the, the, the correct time to start with this kind of therapy and uh, uh, we saw that it's possible to start in different periods knowing that we can we can obtain different sort of results the earlier we start the best results we will be able to reach and uh, in this table you have a summary uh, with the colors of the appliances and the last appointment was uh, about the management of the deep bite. That is very important because deep bite is very common in malocclusion, often connected with the other kind, other signs of malocclusion. And moreover, the deep bite is a, uh, a malocclusion that is able to relapse very often. And today we will approach the open bite. The open bite that is the last uh, appointment and uh, in some way it, it is the uh, opposite direction of growth compared with the, the deep bite. When we approach the open bite, we have that uh, in literature we can find several definitions, but perhaps the main uh, definition is that the open bite is the missing contact inside incisors. So there is a space in the anterior area. And uh, even if sometimes we can find a lateral open bite, but today we are uh, concentrated on the anterior of an open bite. And about the open bite, we can find several controversial concepts in literature. And uh, in particular way, it's very important to uh, analyze and to know the vertical tendency of the of growth of the craniofacial structure. I want to mean that if we have an open bite inside a brachyfacial type, a low growth, uh, it, it is uh, very easy to manage. Uh, but if we have an open bite in a structure of the face that is increasing the vertical dimension 
in a dolichofacial type in hyperdivergent case, it is completely different because we will have a dental problem and skeletal problem too. So this concept are strictly connected with the fact that in literature we can find that the relapse is a very uh, important concept when we treat the open bite. And uh, uh, there are several uh, concepts in uh, literature that we can uh, uh, find about this, uh, uh, this problem, and we will see it later. And I want to start with uh, uh, Giuseppina, Giuseppina's open bite. She's uh, uh, almost 60 years, uh, um, 60 years uh, old. And uh, she presents an anterior open bite, a symmetrical open bite. But uh, she has a horizontal diameter, and uh, uh, the tongue uh, is not working correctly with an, an abnormal eruption of incisors. And uh, it is important to avoid oral habit and uh, to use uh, an appliance that is able to guide the eruption of the incisors, so to align all the teeth and uh, to correct the anterior relationship between upper and lower teeth. And we want to reach this, uh, this result uh, controlling the position of the teeth. And if we look at this table, uh, we can see that uh, the main movement is uh, just connected in this area because we want that the molars stay uh, control in the vertical relationship the lower incisors too but the upper incisors uh, can uh, overact and uh, uh, my problems in managing this therapy is to have the vertical control in the area that i need to control and uh, uh, to manage correctly the cooperation. And uh, I can use a performal appliance just to obtain this result because I am in the correct moment for the treatment. And uh, I am in the period in which I need to, to control the vertical sagittal and transversal relationship between upper and lower teeth. And in particular way, I can control the crowding if I am able to uh, give enough space to uh, give a correct eruption of lateral incisors using the natural increasing of, of length of the arch and in particular way the natural drift of upper and lower canines that happens when lateral incisors are erupting. So it's really very important to manage the space in this period. And I told that it's important to avoid the bad habit. Giuseppina is a finger sucking and the tongue thrusting. So I need to avoid this, uh, the, this working way of the tongue and of the tongue. So I want to uh, avoid that uh, a vertical increase can uh, structure itself. And uh, all these factors uh, that are designed with the green arrows in this, uh, in this uh, picture happen uh, during the grow uh, of the teeth and during the grow of the face. And uh, it's possible uh, to obtain a great, a large change uh, of the position of the teeth only one month after the stop of the oral habit. You can see in the pictures and it's important to maintain the vertical control the vertical correct relationship to avoid the post rotation of the mandible and uh, normally i used to try to control the bad habit uh, elastic bands uh, that normally are used in the sport or in fitness and uh, i am just working inside the dental alveolar sectors because the upper and the lower jaws uh, presents a correct relationship between themselves. We can see what happened after one month and after 10 months during the eruption of the teeth. 
So I used only for 10 months one appliance during the night to obtain this result. But if we come back about the theology, we can see that uh, the theology is, uh, of the open bias is very wide, and perhaps it is not completely clear. We know that the oral habits are very important to create an open bias, but not only. It, we need to have oral habits that are enough long for frequency, for duration, and for intensity, because only when all these three factors, three parameters, are increased enough, we will have consequences on the on the structure of the teeth. Uh, several uh, connection with speech and swallowing, with the working way of the tongue, and with all the hypertrophy of the lymph lymphoid tissues. And uh, uh, we can analyze these on the lateral X-ray. And we know several uh, papers published in the last century about the uh, oral consequences uh, of mouth breathing. And uh, um, like uh, Linda Rounds on her hard world uh, and good side published about this. But it is very important to the position at rest of the tongue, in particular way if we have a low position at rest, because this can create a low continuous pressure on the teeth and on the mandible, so to, to stimulate the grow the mandible forward. And uh, we cannot forget the genetic information, because we can have in some situation, an increased vertical growth pattern. And this is strictly connected with the structure of the phase, with the uh, hyperdivergent structure or hypodivergent structure of the phase. And this uh, means uh, a lot of consequences because we can see that in a dolicofacial structure, the insert of Mustater and uh, pteromedial um, uh, muscles is very little if compared with the brachiofacial structure. And moreover, we know from literature that the muscular force of the brachiofacial type is almost double than the power of the dolicofacial of the muscles in dolicofacial type. This means that the structure of the mandible is completely different in this situation compared with this situation because of there is a low control of the goniacal angle of the angle of the mandible and uh, this lack of control create the problem in the post posterior area of the mouth so to create interferences that we can read like an open bite in the anterior part of the mouth and uh, obtain a post rotation. And uh, this effect can be seen during the eruption of the teeth because if we think that the molars will erupt downward and forward and upward and forward in about this red amount and this increase, this will create interferences and an open bite in the anterior area like happened in a dolicofacial or hyperdivergent or long phase where the different sectors are changing the relationship between themselves inside the, the phase but we can manage and we will see how can we manage this tendency of growth using uh, some of the LM activators, because uh, we we saw last time that uh, we have the trainers that are very useful to manage the bad habits, like in uh, um, uh, Giuseppina uh, case I showed before. Uh, but we have the activators too, and in particular way the activators presents two different thickness and two different lengths. 
and we told us time that we have the high model, the orange one, and the low model, the low, uh, the yellow one. And we saw that the yellow is good to correct the deep bite, so we can manage the orange to correct the open bite. And we have different sides of these appliances, and we have two different groups, the LM activator and the LM activator 2 line. Moreover, we have the, we saw last time, the LM activator low model reinforced in the anterior part that is very useful when we want to treat the deep bite and all the incisors are just rapid. And uh, in a very simple way, uh, we can uh, connect the yellow appliance with the low phase and with the deep bite, and the orange appliance with the long phase and the open bite. Moreover, we will have a short model to, um, to arrive until up the first molar, permanent molar, and the long model to control the area of the second permanent molar. So the orange, when the second molars will erupt, it becomes um, a green one, and the yellow will become at the same time when the second molars will, will erupt, a blue one. But the very important difference between the low and the high model is the thickness in the posterior part, as we can see in this slide. When we want to manage an open bite, we need an eye model. Why? Because when we use an eye model, we have uh, a control in the posterior part of the eruption of the teeth. It will happen this process. We have a full contact of the teeth in the lateral sectors of the appliance, and we have no contact in the anterior part of the arch. So, it will be happen that when we have we use an LM uh, appliance, the teeth will uh, uh, will move so to reach the occlusal surface of the appliance. But when we want to treat, we avoid we put away the skeletal approach because it's not possible to have a skeletal approach using these appliances. And we can speak about my functional approach and mental approach. And uh, we know that the key to have a, a successful treatment is uh, to control the vertical dimension, to control the vertical relationship between upper and lower jaw in particular way in the posterior area of the teeth in the modern region. So to reduce the extrusion of the anterior teeth to a minimum. Why? Because if I have an open bite and I use elastics in the anterior part of the teeth, I will have a contrary effect because I will have an eruption of the teeth or all the arches, increasing the vertical dimension of the face. And creating a post rotation of the mandible. But I want exactly the opposite. I want an anterotation of the mandible to close the, the open bite. So I need to have no er eruption, to have uh, no extrusion in the posterior part of the arch, and to have ex uh, eruption or extrusion in the anterior part of the arch. So to develop the natural forces that we can uh, see expressed in the arrows inside the design. And uh, we can uh, obtain this kind of movement without active forces. And uh, this is very important when we want to, uh, uh, to have the, the, the control of the, the second molars too, because we need to avoid that the eruption of the second and the third molars will create interferences in the, in the occlusion. But what do we know about open bite treatment stability? And this is a very important question. 
Why? Because uh, uh, in several situations, we can treat the open bite, we can reach a result, but at the end, we will have a lapse after some months or after some years. Why? Because we were treating the symptoms and we were not treating the causes of the, of the problem. And we know from the literature something of very important, because if we analyze the stability of the anterior open bite in the treatment without extraction, we can see that some concept is very important. The first one is that we need to control the vertical position of the bones and of the teeth, and in particular we way to reduce the vertical development of the posterior mandibular teeth during the facilitation period. And we need to have a small vertical movement of maxillary and mandibular incisors. So it means that we need to have a good control in the posterior part of the arch, in particular way in the position of the second uh, permanent molars in the mandibular arch. My, but why the teeth really stay in their place? And uh, it's very interesting to read again this paper published by Professor Profit some years ago, the equilibrium theory revised factors influencing position of the teeth, which is very important to check and to be sure that the tongue is pushing in this area of the maxilla, as we can see in the, in the pink design, the pink color design here. Because uh, the long posture at rest is very important to avoid or to maintain the open bite uh, structure. And I want just to come back about another clinical case. Costanza is about six years of age. We have an open bite in the anterior part of the arch. I can uh, approach with the uh, LM activator, or I can approach using uh, echoderics to expand the upper arch, or an extra oral, extra oral gear I pull so that to check the vertical development of the upper maxilla. And uh, I can use an LM activator orange eye model that was that was the appliance that I choose. And we can see that the mouth are going on, the teeth are going on. And we started in the golden age after six years of age, between six to seven. And after some um, months, we can see that the eruption of the, of the teeth in the lateral sector is giving uh, a good result in the anterior sector too. And we can see the development of the, of the arches. So we treated using an eye model, guiding the eruption of the teeth and using the concept to uh, to manage the um, position of the teeth in the posterior and the, in the anterior part of the arch. In particular way, it's very important that the eruption forces of upper molars and of lower molars that are growing up sagittally, but in a very important, important amount vertically too, can be controlled using this appliance. And you can see here that the morphology of the appliance is very important, but not only the morphology of the appliance, because I told you in the previous appointments that the alimentary habits, the food is very important, like an active exercise. So we need to have 
uh, hard food to be used every day in the diet of our children. And uh, arrive to Lorenzo. Lorenzo is a different structure of divide of, of invite. We have a, a little of invite in the anterior part, in little increases over jet, but it is uh, very interesting to see that we have interferences between the function and the structure. Almost all the permanent teeth are arrived in the uh, in the arch. We have to guide the eruption of the of upper right canine and of this uh, premolar 4.5. But uh, it is interesting to to see that uh, this case is completely different from the previous because in the previous cases we started very early at six. And now we are setting something later. We are starting when almost all the permanent teeth are changed because the lateral sectors are very near to complete the changing period. And uh, we want to approach using a vertical control of this uh, structure. structure. Even if we have not very important problems, if we analyze these three parameters that are very important in my approach to check the vertical relationship. We can see some um, analysis, but the sense, the hard core of this uh, uh, case is that the structure is horizontal and we have an anterior open bite in horizontal structure that this uh, creates a situation that is very easy to manage even if we have that the tone is not working very well so the synthesis of my treatment is uh, to to avoid the vertical movement of the molars and to consent the overruption of the incisors and the upper and lower incisors. We can see that the high model can be very performing to approach this uh, alteration because of the red atoms can give the control daily, every night, from night to night, of the vertical increase in the posterior part. And you will see the effect in the beginning only in the dental alveolar sectors. And later, you will see the, all the effects in the uh, skeletal part too. And again, all the effect is to avoid to have a full contact, full contact in lateral sectors and to check and to avoid the overaction of the lateral sectors to, the, to avoid the post-rotation of the mandible, and on the contrary, to increase the control of this area and to consent the eruption of the frontal incisors. And we arrived again in the, um, to analyze the same uh, sequence that we saw before, but this time we had a different uh, range of age because uh, we started after 10 years of age. So when the golden age, is, it is just stopped. But we can do a lot. And you can see from the pictures, because you can see that uh, we, are, uh, we have a, a full control of the position of the teeth, that the crowding is reducing too. And if we analyze the, the lateral X-ray, we can see that uh, the change is very is very little, and we had a full control of the vertical relationship to increase the the um, through the night use to increase the collaboration. And after one year of treatment, you can see what happened from this model to this model. 
and uh, this is uh, the the point in which I need to start the size of the um, of the appliance. So to increase the length of arch between the maxial surface of 3.3 to the maxial surface of 3.4, even if in this case I have no 3.4 because it is locked in the arch, and some more sometimes I can use the maxial surface, the distal surface of the lateral incisors. And we have here a scientist's a summary of what happened in the posterior part and what happened in the anterior part. And this is the change between starting and the end uh, point of the of, the, of this uh, pattern, of this treatment. And if we analyze the, uh, the table of the numbers, the parametric numbers, between before and later, we can see that we have a, a good relationship between the bones in such a uh, dimension, and uh, the vertical relationship is uh, almost the same because of uh, uh, a good control of the vertical eruption of the teeth in the posterior part of the arch. Even if we have, uh, uh, and we can notice here, we when we use these appliances, we always have uh, an amount of the uh, vestibular uh, tipping of um, lower incisors. And this is the scheme of the movement. And uh, when we When we treat with LM activator, we have uh, uh, always the use of biological forces. But when we are treating the open bite, and in particular way, when we are treating a skeletal open bite, because of the direction of the phase is increasing the vertical relationship, we can use two bands in the posterior part of the arch. And these two bands, are connected with uh, an egg year high pool, so that the direction of the grow of the phase that is going in this way, in this direction, is completely controlled because the arms of the, the external arms of the uh, egg year arrive here around the um, premolars so that the, this force, the direction of this force is passing through the center of resistance of upper arch and to uh, avoid the expression uh, of the amount of the vertical growth of maxilla. It is, uh, uh, this red, red arrow is uh, very good to uh, synthesize the direction of the application of the force. So we have a, a combination when we have a, a dental and skeletal by of two different uh, approach. The LM dental appliance that is able to control the position of the teeth and uh, the a gear that is able to control the position of uh, uh, in the, the direction of the glow of the upper maxilla. But my uh, last message about the use, the treatment uh, of uh, open bite and the use of LM activator in uh, this kind of malocclusion is that again, like in the deep bite, we need, we really need to have a good vertical control uh, of the glow, not only of the teeth, but of the face too. Because if we want to have a summary we have a, 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 a combination of all the clinical situation. We know that, what, what is that? We know that we have a normal uh, relationship between the teeth and the, inside the face, a balance inside the face. But if we are going in this direction of this uh, line, we can have 
a dental deep bite we can have a dental deep bite or a skeletal deep bite and when we have a, a dental deep bite or a skeletal deep bite we will have different relationship between the bones and uh, our treatment would be completely different and our result would be different. At the same time, when we are going in the opposite direction of this uh, table, we can see that we can have a dental open bite that are easy to manage and the skeletal open bite that is much more complex to manage, even if the basic biomechanical concept of treatment are always the same. And uh, at the back of the dental and the, uh, the skeletal of bite, we have two completely different morphologies of the face. And uh, this different morphology of the face is uh, strictly connected with different uh, uh, structure of the muscles as we saw in uh, uh, one of the beginning slides and uh, in the way of working of, uh, of the face. And so we, we can manage during the eruption of the teeth uh, all kind of malocclusion and in particular way if we use the eye model, uh, um, the, short, the, the, the short one when we have only the first permanent molars and the long one when we have the second permanent molars inside the arches to control the increased vertical uh, vertical growth. So that using this appliance, again, we can use the power of eruption of the teeth because uh, when we use this appliance, we are just managing the biological forces that are creating during the eruption of the teeth to modulate the dental alveolar sectors. And uh, uh, I arrived uh, at the end of this approach to, uh, to the open bite, and uh, I thank you for following us, for following me in uh, this uh, uh, adventure in uh, these five different uh, uh, capitals uh, to approach malocclusion through a vertical um, approach uh, that is a bit different uh, from daily from daily approach that we use in the orthodontic world. And uh, I hope that uh, this can be just a way to open a door or to open a window on a, a different uh, universe, on different uh, approach to manage not only the malocclusion from biomechanical point of view, but to manage the every treatment in a, in a different uh, in a different way, and uh, I think that uh, uh, now if you have some questions, I can uh, answer directly, or you can write um, to uh, to uh, the organization uh, about your invite. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that the next. Uh, seminar will be very interesting because uh, uh, we can uh, we we will be able to discuss about the um, uh, several questions. I think that we need to check the the, uh, the the data date of the of the appointment. And uh, uh, I just want to stop here. If you have um, some questions, uh, you I can uh, I can uh, write for some uh, minutes. Uh, or I will answer you through email uh, in the next days. Thank you for uh, your kind of attention. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Pellegrino. We have one question here on the line, which yes. is uh, like this. Are there some exercises to do for labial incompetence and for tongue position? Oh yes, uh, I, I think that uh, the, be the best exercise that I prefer in my daily work is the art food, to change the uh, daily diet so that uh, children are able to eat 
are the food because they normally today almost in Italy uh, normally they uh, use uh, soft food uh, but uh, there is something else about this point because uh, uh, the morphology of the appliance uh, in particular way the uh, lingual um, morphology of the appliance is uh, very useful to guide uh, the position of the tongue not only uh, in uh, the active movement pushing with the, the point of the tongue in the uh, anterior part of the uh, art palate in, behind the um, uh, upper incisors but it is very important to support a correct position possible position of the tongue um, during the night so uh, at the end i don't use active exercises uh, to um, uh, to correct uh, this only really sometimes as i said last time sometimes in a very few percent of cases i have not responded um, children and uh, uh, it happens much more for the deep bite than not for the open bite and um, uh, i uh, i work a lot as i said about the use of a, a, a good quality a good consistency of the food because this increase the power of the muscles masticating muscles and in this way it's possible to have a good control increasing control of the vertical positions uh, position of the molars thank you very much for the question and for the answer would there be some additional questions still on the line then you are still welcome to ask you can raise your hand and we can unmute you or then you can write your question so at this moment there are no additional questions i will just check here if there is a raised hand no hello yes Okay, then there is a question here on the line in Italian. Okay. I have to read it first, excuse me. Yes, no problem. Um, it says that um, è possibile adattare i differenti dispositivi ai differenti pazienti in base alle loro car caratteristiche individuali con quali accorgimenti? Okay, it's a very interesting uh, question. If uh, it means that uh, the question is if we can change, if we can modify uh, the uh, standard appliance to create an individual appliance so that to respect uh, each individual characteristic of group. Uh, from uh, my, my experience from this point of view is that from a theoretical point of view, it is, uh, it is possible. And uh, I, in truth, I uh, did it several times, uh, trying to find a, a way to um, uh, have a, the best uh, opportunity to treat the children that, that are in which I daily use these kind of appliances. Uh, but after several um, attempts, uh, I think that today uh, the best way to, to manage is to use the, the standard appliance and uh, to uh, use the brains, the brain to uh, work with the standard appliance in the, in the best way. What I want to say that uh, normally we say that uh, when I have a, a deep bite, I use a, a low model and then I, when I have a, a, an open bite, I use an orange model. model. It is so, but it is uh, uh, too simple in this way. 
and uh, uh, the several numbers of say of phases is not possible to be uh, connected only in these two different categories in two different to these different groups so i think that in the daily work uh, this rule is the basic rule but uh, we can improve our work uh, using uh, in uh, in um, uh, a sequence uh, sometimes the low model and the high model the low model the high model and so on to modify the inclination of the occlusal plane uh, because uh, not all the deep bites are evils, not all the open bites are evils. So we need to uh, to manage in a different way, checking constantly the uh, answer of the muscles uh, because we are putting inside the mouth some information, not only from the mechanical point of view, but some information from uh, proprioceptive point of view. So this is the, the reason for which it is important uh, to check the treatment and the, to uh, correct, uh, to modify a little the treatment. We uh, analyze in this approach, in these five uh, seminars, just the, the basic way to approach uh, this kind of malocclusion. But it is clear that uh, to treat malocclusion is something much more complex. Otherwise, uh, each one uh, parent could buy the appliance in a, in a, in, in a store and put inside uh, his son and uh, to correct the malocclusion. But it is not so. We need to understand the structure of malocclusion, the way of the evolution of the malocclusion, and uh, we need to remember that we need to do a good diagnosis and then the LM activator is just a tool, an orthodontic tool, to reach a good result in a different way. But we need to have clear in our mind where we want to go and in which way we are going in that direction. Thank you.